All right, thanks everyone for coming. My name is Kyle. I'm here to talk about uh, the culture and reality of monitoring at Stack Overflow. So just a little background for context about me and Boson. I've been with Stack Overflow for about six years now. The reason I mention that is when I started, it was about 30 people and now it's 300. So even though that's kind of a long time to be at a tech company, our values are the same, but the company has changed a lot. We have more teams, more ambitions, it's grown. Um, I started coding with uh, one other person, Boson, three years ago. It was open source two years ago. Um, at the time, time series alerting was a somewhat novel idea, especially at least in the open source world, right? There wasn't a lot of that. Now there's Prometheus, Prometheus and as we see, Grafana, um, and there's other things I'm not mentioning. The goal was really to build a better um, alerting system in terms of signal to noise ratio and informative alerts. That was kind of the two things that was frustrating me the most. Um, I think we've been largely successful for that, so now I'm sort of thinking about different problems. Um, largely as the company grows, like I said, there's more complexity to the company. So I'm thinking about how humans interact with alerting and monitoring in general and how they use monitoring as a medium for communication. Um, so some of Stack's monitoring stack, which I am not gonna fully cover because um, I just don't have time, but there's Boson, it's basically an IDE for alerting. You'll be seeing some screenshots of that. We built an agent called S Collector whose main, the reason we kind of built our own agent is we are Windows and Linux, are both first class systems in our environment, so we needed monitoring support for both and that just wasn't really something that was out there in a single agent. We currently use OpenTSDB for better or worse, maybe worse. Um, and then Grafana, we needed user uh, crafted dashboards, Elastic Kibana, and there's other stuff I just um, won't get into it. So more accurately, I really wanna talk about the cultures and realities of monitoring at Stack Overflow because it turns out reality is far more complex than how we think about it, right? And it's not just a big success, it's not a failure. Things are sort of a mix of success and failures to various degrees. Um, I like to think of this difference between this mental model we build of how things work, how our systems um, as our mental model, uh, the difference between reality and the system as our mental model, how we perceive it. And they're really abstractions we create to understand the systems, right? Because complexity is just too much. Um, so monitoring is a medium of communication um, and effectiveness of monitoring can really be, think, be thought about as end-to-end -end communication. How well are we communicating with each other through these tools? Um, and monitoring is a hard medium to communicate with, right? So end-to-end -end communication with monitoring really means humans talking to other humans through machines. And if you think about it, like just how hard is it to communicate with language and writing already, um, let alone doing it through software? Um, so this was a presentation given by uh, Kasky Dixon at least a couple of years ago where he outlined the sort of major components of a monitoring system. But sort of what I like to think about more now is how we interact with these. And what happens is you have maybe one person creating a metric or sets of metrics. Probably a different person creates a collector, maybe does some transformations on that. They get thrown into a TSDB, someone does some transformations on that. Someone makes some dashboards and alerts, those people plus other people probably consume them. So each one of these sort of um, communication points between the author and the software, or the software and the consumer, is a major point for failure. Um, a lot of these people are often not in the same organization, especially in the open source world, right? And when you think about it, it's a pretty serial. Um, everything's pretty upfront, so if the metric documentation isn't good or someone didn't go back to fix that and everything, your dashboards, and alerts are based on those metrics, it's probably all gonna fall apart. You're gonna lose fidelity to information. It's like old Christmas tree lights, right? They were connected in serials. One goes out and you've shorted the whole circuit. Um, there's some other patterns too. For instance, humans may talk to other humans about their alerts or dashboards, right? So they're not really using the software to communicate fully. They're using it and then they're going and verbally communicating with someone, hey, this is how you use my dashboard. This is how this alert works tends to be an anti-pattern, um, it doesn't scale well, and um, especially if it's a medium other than documentation, and it's also error prone. The other sort of thing that can happen is just a human writing alerts for themselves, right? Um, and that's dangerous too, because as you grow, um, 
that's no longer going to work. And also, if you take the time to think of as if you were communicating with someone else, you refine your own thinking and probably ask yourself questions about things you were assuming and then realize they're not true. So I want to take this to Stack Overflow. I want to look at Boson, our alerting system, Grafana in terms of sort of human interaction and communication. And there's um, really two personas but three. There's authors, there's consumers, and then there's some degree of a mix. Like in truth, chances are if someone's writing an alert, they're going to be one of many consumers of that alert. Same with the dashboard. Um, so looking at the workflow in Boson, a lot of this is all in the same UI, and I kind of think of it as three levels. First, you graph your expression. Um, Boson's graph page only works with OpenTSDB, although we do support other time series databases, but you don't get that graph page. Um, you have to start at level two, which is um, Boson has an expression language. It's quite powerful. You can manipulate things, uh, reduce sets, transform sets into reduced values, like pivots, all sorts of things. And then finally, you refine your expression. You make a template so you can include graphs and stuff like that. And new, you can finally save the config. You didn't used to be able to do that, which was super annoying. Um, so let's kind of journey through these, these three levels here. Um, so first, we have the graph page. This looks a lot like Grafana, right, in many ways. Uh, what's nice is our agent, our other things, sends some um, um, metadata information so you know if it's a gauge or a counter. You know what the unit is. It builds the query expression for kind of phase two, and you get, it's probably hard to read, but a description of the metric, just a prose description of the metric. So that's all great, yay. Um, except level one is pretty deceptively simple. I drew some boxes around the problems, and I don't have time to talk about all the problems, but there are some problems. Um, one of the main issues, I think, for the graph page, and this is going to be true of Grafana, too, that you need to understand how your time series database works. And they're funky, right? So with OpenTSDB, you have to understand group by, filter, aggregation, counter, whether it's a derivative or not, um, downsampling, linear interpolation. In the case of OpenTSDB, if you try to use these features without counters, your data is probably going to be not what you asked for because there's a bug in their order of operations. So TSDBs in general are a very leaky abstraction, right? So this is already effort that's required. Um, just look at some other things. That particular metric was physical interfaces. That could have been better. We don't really describe how the tags work, what each tag means. Um, that could be better. And when you look at the y-axis, it's SI units, base 10, but because it was a network graph, people think base 2 and bits, even though it says bytes. So all sorts of places for communication to go wrong, even, even in level 1. And again, that's mostly around the TSDB, and it's only really accessible to authors that are kind of willing to accept somewhat of a steep learning curve unless they're okay with their data maybe looking right, but even if it looks right, it could be wrong. Um, but once you've figured all that out, congratulations, you've made it to Boson level one. Only two more levels to go. Um, so our next thing is the expression page. The expression page is largely a text box. It is pretty cool though. Like you can inspect results. It's basically a REPL for Boson's expression language. It lets you incrementally craft expressions. Um, see the results, and it gives you a tremendous amount of power, and I love power. But there are no more buttons, right? And this is, this is actually kind of a problem. So the expression language I like to think of as quick to learn, and it's quick to learn as long as you kind of understand this sentence. Um, a f the, the expression language is a functional set-based and type domain specific language for querying time series databases and reducing those series into other sets. So if that's like, if that it just clicks with you, great. If not, it's probably going to take you a little while. You can do simple things and copy other examples, but with that power comes a fair amount of complexity. So you read the documentation, you look at examples on the internet, watch some training YouTube videos, pay careful attention, you'll be pretty good. Here's an example incantation in the expression language. This is kind of medium difficulty. It uses a transpose function, which does some funky stuff. There's stuff we have that is far more complicated than this and stuff we have that is simpler. But once you've kind of figured that out, level up, level two, now there's only one more level to go. Okay, so the rule page lets you create templates, which is great. You can include tables, graphs, links, elastic logs, all sorts of stuff. Um, and all that will be in the notification you get. And this is all done through the interface. Um, after learning, so the problem is right now the documentation with that is not very good. Um, I'm working on that. It is very cool. You can test the alert against history and view instances of it, and now you can save the config just to kind of give you some UI, what it looks like. Here's our, um, an alert that uses a template. 
um, that's already kind of defined that we made to make things a little bit faster. Um, this is, you can kind of see what the notification is gonna look like with the graphs, et cetera. When you do the historical testing, you get timelines. You can actually preview what the notification would have looked like at that time. The main advantage being that you can get rid of a lot of that alert noise that I was talking about right off the bat before you even published your alert. Um, so once you've run that, you've made it to Boson level three. You've made it, congratulations. So, but that's a lot of complexity, so why? Um, again, the things I said, good signal to noise ratio, informative alerts, and as you can see, we really kind of designed this around a power user workflow. It's pretty much an integrated development environment for alerting. Uh, this is an image from a blog post by John Alspa called Considerations for Alert Design. This was actually pretty influential in designing Boson in that we wanted to avoid noise, be a little bit less concerned about missed alarms, because people are very concerned about missed alarms, when I think really they should be more worried about all the friggin' noise. Um, so there's sort of this target where we're not really getting false alarms, we're not getting missed alarms, and it's pure signal, that's the goal. Um, so again, for the complexity, secondly, Boson puts the burden of communication on the author. Um, and it does this because it moves communication into earlier in that serial pipeline, um, with the exception of the data coming from the collector. So that really, I think, helps with communication to front load it, because it's, it's gonna be less people doing all this stuff. Um, the reality of alerts from what we found is the power of expression language is actually used quite a bit. There's a lot of exceptions to get alerts down to a reasonable amount of noise and some follow up tuning. And sort of what I found is the team scales, you're better off ha having authors put in more effort to communicate effectively. Because in say a team of 10 people, maybe even if all of them are authors for each thing you make, there's probably gonna be 10 or some subset of them consuming that. So in terms of scaling your time and effort, it's better to kind of front load the information, especially as a company kind of grows and your technology solidifies and things are changing a little bit less fast in terms of your tech stack. There's a problem with this, and that's that our authors are a bit scarce. Um, so authorship, as we saw, you have to uh, make it through the three levels, um, training, time, investment. And as a result, we sort of, and we've grown and had these teams, we sort of have three cultures going on now. We have, you know, kind of the ideal, the self-service DevOps, where the team uses Boson pretty much independently. We have concierge, where sort of the experts in Boson will help people when they need to. Um, and then we have um, sort of the missing team. Um, there's really just gaps. Um, so thirdly, reasons. Reasons are just historical excuses. Um, you know, time, like I said, sort of uncharted territory when we built this seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, I think what's most interesting is the balance of complexity and power. Um, rule of thumb that as something becomes more flexible and powerful, it becomes more complicated, but that isn't always true. Simplicity is a feature, it allows you to reason about it. So kind of thinking about how to simplify the complexity for the author persona while maintaining the power is really what I'm kind of looking forward to fix in the future. And we saw that Grafana is kind of almost coming up from the other way, which is really interesting, right? They want to make it easier for people to do stuff and then add power. So I want to see if I can even use some of those Grafana features um, for a Boson plugin in the future. So the save feature, I won't get into this because I don't really have time, but um, mistakenly we sacrificed usability for power. We thought we wanted um, version control and that was more important than being able to save from the UI. Basically we found out we could get both as long as we didn't support pull requests and we just sort of had Boson be the sole pusher to the repo. Uh, the other persona, consumer, Boson's alert handling workflow is um, non-traditional. It surprises people in some ways. The main thing is that incidents only re-notify on severity escalation until a human has closed them. So if you have something that goes warn, crit, warn, you're not gonna hear about that warn. Or if it goes like, you're gonna hear about the warn and the crit, but not that third warn. If it goes normal and warn again, you're not gonna hear about that unless he's closed it. It can keep nagging you until you acknowledge it, but you have to close it before the whole incident life cycle starts again. Also, there's no normal notifications. Um, there's some results to that design. It requires a lot of discipline. Um, it works well when you have discipline. I'm not really aware of missed um, notifications because they weren't closed. It also gets rid of this terrible alerting anti-pattern. I mean, you don't have to have this anyways, even if you have enough feature. 
but sort of you get an alert and then you get an up alert and you're like, okay, I'm just not going to worry about that because it's better. That's extremely dangerous. It's if, if you, the philosophy behind Boson is if you are going to alert someone, a human should look at it. If a human is not going to look at it, don't alert. You can log it and humans can look at it later, but it only really should be alerting when that's needed. It doesn't need flapping detection, detection, reduces notifications. The downsides are, again, the workflow is a bit complicated. Um, and it's, so it's not suitable for all situations and it's not suitable for all teams. If you have a small team that only really has three alerts, they're probably not worried about the spam. They'd rather not have to worry about acknowledging alerts. But for like a site reliability team, it becomes more important. So Grafana, we needed a way, Boson doesn't have dashboard visualization. We needed a way to bring that to stack. So we installed it, pointed it to OpenTSDB and people started using it and that just kind of happened. So then we made this uh, Boson plugin, which was referenced in the beginning, um, that really we could do a couple things. We could start to, the main thing I wanted to do is since Grafana is more accessible, more, um, more users picked it up naturally, I kind of wanted to take Grafana authors and turn them into Boson consumers. And now I almost want to explore that with turning them into um, Boson authors as well, now that there's an alerting feature to make at least some more simple alerts. Um, so. It shows a relevance on that, and it also lets you achieve some visualization you couldn't do. V1 was just a query generator. V2, we added sort of the thing to get the metadata that I talked about from Boson and Grafana. Um, one kind of, again, thinking about communication and loss of fidelity is we have this description, but there's really no good way to get that into Grafana currently. We could add a text box, but for sort of long information that people probably only need run once or twice, a question mark would be better. So it's kind of like screen real estate versus visualization is a bit of a problem there. Um, you can manage your alerts. We have annotations um, and you can view them as Grafana annotations. The only difference is sort of we have duration in our annotations. You can view the alerts, you can do crazy stuff like I said as far as build complicated expressions and build tables that you probably couldn't do with just OpenTSDB and Grafana. Has it worked? Sort of. We have better dashboards, more eyes on alerts. I don't really think we have more authors. So again, usability, training, documentation. I want to look at Grafana for maybe filling in some of the simple use cases. Um, going back to the sort of theme of IDE, can I add auto-completion, integrated documentation for all the functions, all these things to make people more efficient as power users, also need to refactor the state machine because as a project gets a few years old, you communicate depth, um, communicate depth, debt, debt or death, I don't know, debt can lead to death. Um, so what are the solutions? Work backwards from what we're trying to communicate, I think. Imagine the dashboard, imagine the alerts and go back from that. Um, over communicate early in the pipeline so when it is serial um, you don't lose information early in the pipeline or if you can find a way to make it not serial even better. Um, think of the audience of your alert dashboards what are they going to need to know and if someone comes up and asks you about something if you can don't tell them add it to your dashboard add it to your alert. All this stuff is iterating you get better and better and I think really just more thinking about the humans we have a lot of software now we have a lot of great open source alerting and dashboarding software over the past couple of years. So how can we get better at it? How can we integrate it more? And how can we make it human friendly? Um, I don't think I really have time for questions. I put it here, but if you want to come find me at the break, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you.